You're listening to Feel Good Astrology with Louisa Tanner Munson. To request a reading with Louisa, go to www.feelgoodastrology.com. Welcome back, Gemini. This is your five minute forecast. I'm Louisa Tanner Munson. Let's get cracking. So, um, <laughs> this is quite a big one. Um, your actual ruling planet, Mercury, is changing twice in this month ahead, and Mar- March is also really big. Now, there's a lot of things going on, which I'm hoping to capture all of it, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all of that in five minutes. Suffice to say, I've recorded a lot of extra material in this month ahead. In particular, it's worth checking out the Saturn in into Pis- Pisces and Pluto into Aquarius for Geminis. It's uh, around about 10 minutes long and it gives you a much greater context as to what this particular month is really setting up for you in in total and how it's likely to manifest and play out over the longer term. So the first thing that really um, catches my eye for you is pretty much on the second Mercury's changing signs. It's coming out of the sign of Aquarius, where it's been for quite some time in uh, the ninth house for you, and it's moving into the tenth house of Pisces. What I'm seeing is that you're starting to think beyond what you've just learned. You know, in this last short while, you've been learning a lot more in terms of your belief systems and where you sit in life and how it all plays out. A lot of things where you've been really hard and fast about, you've recently started to think, oh, maybe I should be a bit more shades of grey. And so it's been quite an interesting time for you, given that you do like to have this sort of factual quality of knowing if something is true or false, right or wrong, left or right, and so on and so forth. So it has been quite a confusing time. Mercury in the night isn't a particularly strong place for it to be. You know, it has felt quite tedious. And from the second, it's really moving into the tenth, where it feels like you can really start to apply what you've learned over, you know, the last few weeks or so. So it really starts to feels like you can start moving ahead and start talking about what you're wanting out of life, where you're going, what your direction is and how you stand in the world. Like, you know, what is it that makes you, you? That's kind of important, isn't it? Um, then later on the month, um, your, your, um, ruling planet is is also changing signs again. On the 19th, it's then moving into the sign of Aries. It's taking you from the 10th house to the 11th. And so how I'm seeing it is that the first two, almost three weeks is really about you making a clear dec- declaration as to where you're going in life, like what your direction is. And then from that point, it feels like you're moving into a space of connecting with people and starting to manifest it. So, you know, you've decided your direction, you're, you've got a moment of renewed clarity. And then it's, you know, the last couple of weeks is really about saying, okay, this is who I am. And I'm really pleased to be working with you. Um, how can I collaborate with you? How can we share ideas? How can we make this piece of the pie even bigger? So I really see you ending the month on quite a collaborative note. Now, amongst all of that, on the 7th, 7th is, is really quite a big day for you, um, as it is for most people. We've got the full moon in the sign of Virgo, and that is in your um, fourth house, which is all about how things are going at home. So um, like full moons across the fourth and 10th houses are particularly intense because it feels like, you know, at some level, you really need to attend to your private life. And yet life is trying to take you into the future and into your public life. So it does feel very conflicted and you're likely to feel quite emotional at home and probably make a lot of rash decisions and possibly speak a little bit too emotionally, a little bit too vulnerably. Now, whilst I I think that's a really great, you know, that you can talk more openly, it it actually feels like it could be um, a sort of over emotional, which is the overall motif for a full moon. Never mind though, because whatever comes out is, is what we need right now. And we are in this kind of healing phase, I think, in terms of humanity. Now on the, um, date of the new moon, which is on the 21st, that's happening at zero degrees, um, of Aries, which is a good match for your 11th house. It really feels like whatever is churning up in this month ahead can get released from the 19th, the 20th, the 21st, as all of the energies are heading towards the sign of Aries. It really feels like it's time to really collaborate. It's really time to um, connect more strongly with the people around you, find out what they need, find out how you can work together. Um, And it's, it's, do you know what I I would say is it's great that recently you've been in that place of greys, shades of grey, rather than this is how it is, black, white, left, 
right um, and right and wrong. Because it's the shades of grey that you're needed or that has been needed to put you into this new phase of super networking, super collaboration, super creativity. Um, you really do need to have people on board and you can only do that if you can include them. And that means to see the whole potential and the whole of every person. You know, we can't, um, you know, when when we put people in boxes as left and right and stuff, you know, we're not seeing the whole person. So I really see this as a very sort of human month for you. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. If you need any further help, then just give me a shout. Lots of love to you. Bye for now. To request a reading with Louisa, go to www.feelgoodastrology.com.